Hi, welcome to Copenhagen. Thanks for dropping in. Today I am unboxing two new additions to the Copenhagen collection. So you may be wondering what the Copenhagen collection is. Um, I started diamond painting in January 2020 and I've done quite a few. I've bought a lot. I have a lot on the to-do list. But after a while, um, I started to think about creating my own diamond paintings. Um, when I moved to Copenhagen from Scotland in 2012, I started to take a lot of pictures around the city and I decided to convert some of them into diamond paintings. But instead of just doing a straight picture, I decided to tweak them a bit um, and turn them more into artwork than just a picture. So, so far I have um, four and uh, these are the next two. So, these are from Smith's Beads uh, in the UK, smithsbeads.co.uk. Uh, that is the company that I've chosen um, to make these for me. So today we have two and uh, the way that Mike sends them is I get one box with the canvases, which is this one, a black Toblerone. Um, this box design works very, very well. Um, haven't had any problems at all. It's, uh, it's very strong, so it's, uh, it's a nice design. And what it does, because there's two canvases in here, there isn't enough space in the box to put um, two sets of drills. So what he does is he sends me a box of drills. So we have 1.5 kilograms of drills in this box. But this is for two diamond paintings. So I think we'll start off with the drills and we'll have a look at them. Uh, I'll move this out of the way so we can see better. Gives me a bit more space. So as you can see, um, they come wrapped in plastic, which helps to keep them dry, just in case uh, they go out in the rain. So um, well taped as well. This is always the, the boring part, opening the packaging. But it has to be done. It's also the noisiest part. So we have a box and let's try to figure out which way. to see how he's, he's done them this time. Um, I'm never quite sure what to expect when opening the boxes. Uh, he's, he's added extra stuff again. Um, Mike seems to <laughs> enjoy doing this. Uh, I get a lot of surprises. So all I should have in here uh, is drills. But he sent me a free sample of uh, these little tubs. Um, I'm on a bit of a mission at the moment, um, trying different ways to store drills. So I think Mike's been watching the videos. So he sent me these little tubs, I think, to see how I got on with these, which is pretty cool. Thanks, Mike. Um, before we get to the drills, we've got the goodie bag. Um, there's a story behind this as well. Mike contacted me last time and said, Jim, do you need um, like pink pens and wax and tweezers and all that sort of stuff? Um, and I said, no, I have so many. Uh, I have, I must have about two kilos of wax. Um, and I have, I have, I don't know, about 30 or more than 30 pens. 
So he stopped sending them to me because I don't need them. But he knows that I really like these trays that that he uh, sends out. So he sent me quite a few. So just to explain that if you ordered um, from Mike, um, you would get a tray like this, which I really like because they have square edges. Uh, just have a look about. I'll use this one. The standard trays normally come with angled sides like that, which means if you have this sitting with drills in it and you accidentally tap it, it'll flip over really easily and it gets very annoying. These ones are square sided, they are slightly wider than your standard size trays as well as you can see. Um, so it gives them a, a bigger base and they are less likely, I mean they will flip if you hit them hard, but just because they've got these square sides they're less likely to flip and I really like these. So uh, Mike has graciously sent me six is pretty cool and at the moment I'm still using tic tac boxes even though I do have some other things to try um, the reason is because the diamond painting that I'm working on at the moment has 90 colours and I don't have 90 boxes of any of the other types so I'm still using the tic tac boxes at the moment and these nozzles are really really handy because they fit exactly in the top of a tic tac box so it's easy to tip the drills back in but as i was as i was going to say if you were ordering from mike you would get a tray you would get wax you would get tweezers and uh, a pen so um, it, it's just because i don't need them and um, so that's why he's sending these well again i didn't know he was sending them but thank you very much um you will get a nice little net bag. Uh, I'm guessing that they come in different colours. This one's a brown one. Uh, previous ones I've had, I think, were pink. Uh, little net bag. Quite handy, quite nice uh, for keeping stuff in. So that's pretty cool. Now, I think we're down to the drills. So as I said, I've actually got drills for two diamond paintings here. So... Um, what Mike has done, he's put a label on them so that I know which uh, canvas they're for. Now this is the first one and this is a picture that I took in the Botanical Gardens in Copenhagen about two summers ago. I was going around taking pictures of flowers and I was just about to take a picture of this flower and a hoverfly landed on the flower. So I got this picture as a bonus um, so I looked at it and I thought that's something a bit different to do uh, for a diamond painting. It still qualifies for the Copenhagen collection because it was take the picture was taken in the botanical gardens in Copenhagen, but it isn't um, something that people would associate with Copenhagen. Normally, it's Hans Christian Andersen, the Little Mermaid, that sort of thing. But I thought this was a really cool picture and decided to turn it into a diamond painting. So this one is called the Hoverfly, obviously. The next one, again, is a bit different. Um, I was out taking a walk uh, one Sunday morning in Copenhagen. Walked around the corner and I saw this classic Volkswagen Beetle. So I took a picture of it and I decided to uh, convert this into a diamond painting as well. So I have... Um, these two new additions, so we've got the Hoverfly and the Beetle. So you can see quite a few drills. This is the Hoverfly. Three bags. And you can see it's going to be uh, pretty colourful. And then we've got the Beetle. This is the second bag, so two bags of that, and again, a lot of colour. Um, as I said, I, I took the pictures, but I didn't want to just create a picture as a diamond painting. 
I wanted it to look a bit different. I wanted it to look more like a piece of art rather than just a picture. So, um, square drills. I'm, I'm not really going to bother opening them, I don't think. Um, as I said, this is uh, pictures five and six. So I'm uh, very familiar with the, the quality of the drills from Mike never had any problems with them at all so um, have a look at the key and we'll see how many colours so you can see this is it in colour gives you a slightly better idea but as always pictures never do justice um, I think this is going to look really cool so uh, the size of this one is 80 centimeters by 75 centimeters so pretty big but to be honest um, they have to be pretty big because of the detail in them um, they are available in different sizes and they are available in square or round drills but um, they won't go down very much because the quality uh, just won't be there and I'd rather uh, not do the smaller sizes uh, because I, I don't want to see the pictures being ruined or people complaining that the, uh, that the detail isn't there because they've gone too small. So if you're thinking about getting one, if you contact Mike at smithspeeds.co.uk, he will advise you on uh, the sizes available and he'll make sure that um, it will be a good quality picture and it won't be like some that you see where the detail is, is so bad that it's difficult to make out the picture. So I'm, I'm very conscious of that and so is Mike. So um, you don't have to worry about um, the quality not being there. It's definitely the highest priority for me. Obviously I want people to enjoy the pictures and this is the Oh, I forgot to say how many colours. I think I saw eight to nine. Yep, eight to nine colours. So these aren't really for beginners. Um, it is a lot of uh, confetti. And uh, if you're new, it can be quite daunting. So um, I would say it's for people who have done a few and they're looking for something different and they're looking for something that's going to take time and uh, effort so it's not a, a quick weekend job this one or any of them uh, to be honest um, I enjoy spending time doing them and I feel that the more effort I put in the more I enjoy them when they're finished so, but um, I do appreciate that some people aren't um, that interested in doing something with so many colours but they're all different so this is the beetle so again these little pictures don't really do them justice but I will be doing them and I will have pictures up on uh, my website but it's going to take time so I'll just check how many we have here Ah, this is only 79 colours. So, 79 and 89. And just to give you an idea, uh, I'll move these out of the way. I'm actually working on one of the Copenhagen collection at the moment, and it is Hans Christian Andersen. It's a picture that I took in Collins Hale, which is the King's Garden in Copenhagen. And it was a picture of a statue of Hans Christian Andersen. And again, um, I tweaked it because I didn't want it to be just a picture. And that is what's under here. Um, people often ask me what this is, what, what, what is this stuff? It's place mats, dinner mats. Um, and I use them to cover the work area and um, underneath that is what I'm working on. So just to give you an idea of what it looks like, the sort of style, this is what I've done so far. 
with Hans Christian Andersen. And this is the base of the statue. And this section here, um, there's swans. You, you can make them out um, if you use your imagination. But there are swans here um, which depict the story, The Ugly Duckling, which was written by Hans Christian Andersen. And we have a wreath on the front. This is the plinth. So the actual statue is up here. So this isn't even one third done. And this has 90 colours. So a lot of work, but I think once this is finished and framed, it's going to look very, very different from anything else I've seen. Um, initially, I started looking for diamond paintings of Copenhagen, and I couldn't find any. And then I thought, well, I, I've got so many pictures that I've taken around Copenhagen, and decided to create some of my own. So th that's how the Copenhagen collection came about. And... Uh, I'm just working on this is the size of area that I work on at a time I have these the release paper and I just take one off and then work in that area and then uh, on to the next one to the next one so um, this gives you an idea the sort of style um, looks a lot different from just looking at a picture so I'll cover it back up and we'll have a look at the canvases these two new ones. There's something on that. I'll just change it. So, um, <coughs> yeah, I use these mats. Um, I, I find them really handy. You can sort of move them around and just show the area that you're working on. Um, and they're washable as well. If I didn't have them and I just had release paper, this is shiny and it's very, very slippery. So the table is at an angle, which you can't really tell looking at this view. But if I have just these cover sheets and then um, I set things on it, like boxes uh, with the drills in them, they slide down the table. So another advantage of these mats is they stop things sliding about. And it gives you a good work area and it keeps everything clean. So, uh, we'll get into the actual canvases. So, as I said, these come in a triangular box, which is quite unusual. I'm going to use my sharp knife for this one. So then we have the triangular box. This looks a bit different from the other ones. Seems to be a join here. The ones I've had in the past have just been like one triangle. So I'll try opening that. I think this is the, the longest box opening so far. So we should have uh, two canvases which are in sealed bags. 
So this one is the hoverfly. Got a little thumbnail there. So the glue on these is the double sided uh, glue, it's not poured glue. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's just me but I find that um, the double sided glue is stickier than the poured glue. But um, I, I do both, um, I don't have any real preference. The only thing is with uh, the poured, uh, not the poured glue, the double sided glue like is on this one. There is a chance that you'll get some air bubbles. Um, they have never really caused me a problem. I've had some very bad ones from, well, one particular bad one from Wish. Uh, but all I did was just slice the, the bubbles with a craft knife and everything was absolutely fine. So I, d I don't have any uh, qualms about using the double-sided glue. And as I said, I find... Uh, personally that it seems to be more sticky um, which I like so we've got the key and a little thumbnail of the hoverfly and then we've got all our numbers all eight to nine colours and then we'll have a look at the canvas so this one the cover is on three strips, so as usual I'll uncover it um, so the, the canvas flattens out um, because it always wants to curl up because it's been curled up in a box for so long and um, it naturally wants to curl up and it's quite a common question uh, people ask about how to uh, flatten it and some people put them under their mattress for a couple of weeks and um, some people put heavy books on them and that sort of thing but I found that um, just peeling the cover off um, basically flattens it so you can uh, basically start working on it the day that you get it you don't have to wait two weeks on it flattening so the way to do it is uh, just gently peel the paper go for the corner and lift it up now you have to be careful that you don't pick up the glue because the glue is actually like a sheet of double-sided tape but much stickier so when i fold the corner over i just touch the back of it and if that isn't sticky it means the glue is still you know you can probably hear it the glue is still on the canvas where it should be if you peel it up and it is sticky it means that you've accidentally peeled up the glue so what to do is just gently put it back, press it down, and then try again. Sometimes you'll catch it. If you've got long nails, um, you might catch that. But So as long as you just check that, um, it isn't really that big a deal. Just don't try and peel it off if it's sticky. So as I said, this is in three strips. So just work along the top, and then peel it back. Now I'm peeling it back about halfway, roughly, and then put the paper back on it. Then move on to the next one. Exactly the same thing. Just, it's always worth just taking your time for this bit when you're doing the when you're peeling the cover off for the first time. It's only the first time you do it that you have to be careful. Once it's been done, that's fine. This side as well. Peel it across. Roughly halfway. Put it back. Next one. 
same thing. So again, just checking that nothing's sticky underneath. Put it back. So now you can see this side is laying flat. It's not trying to curl up. If I turn it around to the side that hasn't been peeled, this is what it tries to do. It tries to roll up again. So I have to do the same thing again. So we get the corner, and then the corner. And pull it back. And you feel tension on it when you pull it back. When you get to the section that you've already uncovered, it suddenly goes slack. And it did it there. So I know that I've peeled it all the way across. So I put it back. The reason that I put it back is just to prevent anything sticking to it, like um, hairs or dust or fluff or crumbs or anything. It is a very sticky glue and you really don't want hairs or anything on it because it's quite hard to get them back off it. So this one is actually folded under this one, so it's better to take this first. Tension goes, so put it back and then we'll go for this one. Peel it back. And that's it. So now you can see the canvas is flat. So it's as quick as that. Um, like I said, you don't have to leave it underneath something for weeks um, to flatten it peel the cover off and it does it itself. So now just making sure that I'm getting everything out of the way that might stick to the glue and um, because I'm going to uncover the canvas to let you see it and I'm going to take the, cent the centre section of it first. Now when I do this I have to be careful um, that I don't touch it. I uh, don't want any fabric or anything, like if it touches, uh, if you're wearing like a, a wool top or anything like that, anything that's got fibres on it, if this touches it, um, you'll end up with all of the fibres on the glue. So you have to be careful, uh, make sure you don't drop it. So uh, as I do this, I'm sort of stepping back out of the way so it doesn't touch me and I'm putting the paper on a chair um, I don't put it on the floor because I don't want any uh, debris um, sort of sticking to the paper like static because if I do that and then put it back on the picture um, I'm going to transfer any dust or anything onto the picture which isn't a good idea you want the glue to be clean so it's nice and sticky and your drills will stick to it so that's it. So now um, the whole thing is uncovered. And I'm going to slide up a bit so you can see it. In fact, we'll turn it around because the fly is upside down. So this is it. So as I said, this was a picture that I took in the Botanical Gardens in Copenhagen. I was actually taking a picture of the flower and uh, this hoverfly decided to, 
to jump in and steal the limelight and I really liked the picture so I've decided to turn it into a piece of art. Um, again looking at the canvas without drills on it uh, really doesn't give it any uh, or do it any justice. This is going to look really really cool. Uh, you will eventually see it behind me uh, when I'm doing the videos once I finish it but I have to finish Hans Christian Andersen first and that's going to take a few weeks um, and then this this is the next one that I plan to do so um, I'm just having a look to see I was talking about air bubbles um, the best way to do it is to tilt it to the light and look for any little lines but I don't I see one line there but it isn't a bubble. I think it's just where uh, the two uh, cover papers meet and it's just created this little line and um, it's still you can see and you can hear it's very very sticky. I like that um, but it does mean you have to be quite accurate when you're putting your drills down. Um, I found that with poor glue if I don't get it quite right I can slide it quite easily into place but with uh, this glue, if you put it down and it's quite far out, um, trying to slide it is really hard because it sticks. So it's better to actually lift the drill and then replace it again. But like I said, I like that. I prefer it to have the stronger uh, glue. So I can't see any air bubbles at all. But just by the, the nature of the process um, it does happen but the main thing is uh, don't panic about it just slice the, the along the air bubble with a really sharp knife a craft knife and um, that lets the air out which means the glue settles flat if you don't do that the air is still trapped under the glue and even though you press the drill down and you think that's it um, over time it will tend to pop back up again so the drill will be on the glue but there will be an air bubble underneath so you start to see the lines where the, the drills aren't as, um, when the light hits it it's different it's kind of hard to explain but if you have the drills all in a row and the light is hitting at a certain angle they all shine the same sort of way but if you have a section where they've raised um, you can see it it just sort of stands out so it's definitely a good idea to get rid of the air bubbles um, before you start, it's a lot easier to do it that way. So I'm just going to cover this quickly. No, I'm doing it the wrong way. I thought that was kind of weird. I need to turn it the other way because it, it isn't square. So 80 centimetres by 75 centimetres. So again, I'm just, uh, I don't know if you can see, see it maybe slightly on camera. There is a line here, but all that is is where the two um, pieces of paper uh, touched. And um, there isn't actually anything wrong with it at all. It's just, it looks like a, an air bubble, but it isn't. Okay, just a quick cover. And we'll have a look at the second one. I'll do for now. Just get it out of the way. Okay, so the second one. Again, sealed the back. They're sealed in the bags, so no dust or anything can get in. And this is the beetle. Um, very hard to see in the thumbnail. But we'll have a look at the canvas. So exactly the same. Yeah, got some tape on it. Comes off really easy. So, thumbnail, 
all the colours and we'll do exactly the same thing when I unbox the diamond paintings I always flatten them out like this and uh, I've got a, a big two big sheets of uh, cardboard that I've taped along one side so it's like a massive book and once I flatten them I put them in there uh, and I've got written on it to be done and then I've got another two sheets of cardboard the same idea like a big book and I uh, have one mat completed so uh, I put the ones that I've finished in there while I'm waiting to get them framed so again same thing go for the corner peel it back check the paper not sticky that's fine next corner peel it back check paper not sticky and drop it over the edge of the table and just peel back so just over halfway -ish. it doesn't really matter how far you go um, but don't peel it off all the way makes it very difficult to work with so halfway from one side uh, and then halfway from the other that's the easiest way to do it as you can see um, once you're, you're used to doing it and you know what to watch for it doesn't take long um, it takes a bit longer when I'm explaining I'm doing this and touch here to make sure it's not sticky but once you know uh, what you're doing it's really quick just do the whole thing in a couple of minutes but again you can see this is the side that I peeled back and this is the side that I didn't this is what you're trying to get rid of and just peeling the paper off is uh, the easiest way to do it folded over I, mean, I can actually feel the glue there so what I did was I just pressed it down so this one's okay back put it back again so you can see I've done that one section and you can see the difference it just takes that um, curl out of the canvas Okay, it's just that this corner, when I peeled it up, the glue did lift up, so all I've done is pressed it back. And I'll just work it along this way. And that's it. So, just peel it back to the middle. Done. So, that's it. So, again, um, I'll just uncover the whole thing so we can have a look at it. Check for air bubbles, check print quality and um, that sort of thing so again I'm not putting the paper on the floor I'm laying it on the chair and I'm keeping it out of the way so that it doesn't stick to me
don't want to do is let it go. Because if it falls on the floor, it'll pick up every little bit of dust. So. This is the Beetle Volkswagen Beetle that had been customised. Again, it's hard to imagine exactly what it's going to look like because uh, it just looks, it's hard to define uh, or see the definition. Um, I think this one had 89 colours, was it? No, it wasn't, it was less, I uh, can't remember now. But, uh, so basically we've got like Volkswagen Beetle parked in the street and then a hedgerow behind it and then some houses. So that's what the, the picture is. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's going to look very different, that was the whole point. I was, trying to come up with a design um, that sort of stands out from the rest. Hopefully it will. So, uh, just checking again, looking for air bubbles. There are none at all. So, really nice job. Yeah, that's perfect. So that's it, it's flat, it's ready to go uh, whenever I'm ready. Uh, this one I'm going to do this after the hoverfly, so it's going to be Hans Christian Andersen, the hoverfly, then the beetle. So, just thinking. I need to get a longer, uh, a longer stand so I can get further back. These big pictures, it's hard to get them in. So that's it, the beetle. So that's it, uh, the two new additions to the IC Copenhagen collection. Um, you can see all of them on the website, which is iccopenhagen.com, which is up here icopenhagen.com um, you can see uh, pictures of uh, all of them but at the moment uh, the ones that are done are Frozen Newham which is this one and Copenhagen Graffiti which is this one these are done uh, as you saw I'm still working on Hans Christian Andersen uh, it's going to be a few weeks <laughs> before that one's finished but you can see uh, the mock-ups uh, to give you an idea, but uh, once I get them finished, I will put completed pictures uh, of them all with uh, frames to give you an idea of what they really look like. Um, I just feel that pictures uh, never do diamond paintings justice. Uh, just the, they tend to be flat uh, when you see the sort of artwork. Um, so I'll probably do a little video uh, where I'll uh, move the camera about so you can see just how shiny they are. Um, as I said, not really uh, beginners unless you're a very, very patient beginner. Um, the Hans Christian Andersen has 90 colours, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember now, but I think the Hoverfly was 89 and then the Beetle was, I can't remember, it was a bit less than that, 80-ish or something. but. Still a lot. Um, I would think normally in your diamond paintings you're around about 40-ish, uh, I would say. So they do have a lot of work in them, but I'm really hoping uh, that they're going to be worth the time and effort. I think they will be, uh, just from what I've been doing with the Hans Christian Andersen. Um, it was always a, a, a bit of a concern. It's okay trying to design them, but um, you're never really quite sure how they're going to actually come out as a diamond painting and that's why I've kept them big because there is a lot of detail and if I try and reduce the size uh, the detail just goes and then personally I feel it's not worth the effort. Uh, nobody wants to spend a lot of time on a diamond painting that uh, they aren't proud enough of to frame and hang in the wall. So that's it. Uh, six uh, diamond paintings in the Copenhagen collection now so uh, that's going to keep me busy for a very long time 
if you're interested in doing one of them um, you can contact Mike at smithspeeds.co.uk and uh, he will help you if you decide maybe you want to do them in round rather than square or you want to do them in a different size um, he'll be able to advise you on that uh, the only thing I'll say is uh, they don't really go smaller <laughs> you can get them bigger um, so that's it for today uh, thanks for watching as always thanks for all the, the messages and uh, the, the people that have been in touch through uh, Instagram as well uh, you can find me on Instagram uh, under uh, Diamond Painting Gym and I also have a Facebook group if you're interested in uh, chatting to other people who diamond paint um, if you're a beginner and you're looking for help and advice or if you have been doing it for a long time and you just want to talk to other people that have got the same interests um, so that is it for today thanks for watching um, if you enjoyed the video please subscribe and hit the notification button to find out what's coming next and if you're watching this tonight when it goes out have a good weekend so thanks for watching and in the meantime take care be safe and wash your hands